Hello everyone. I am having my coffee. I have my nail set done. And I'm gonna be painting my nails while telling you a story today because I wanted to do both and I thought why not do both at the same time. I'm also gonna be painting my nails in a color that I absolutely do not like. I uh, think it's a horrible color, but I thought we'll just see how it turns out and um, and then yeah, <laughs> I guess we'll just see. Sometimes in life you have to go against the pattern and against what you like and I thought I'm gonna do that with my nails today. The story I'm gonna be telling you guys is basically the story of my life but to a specific topic and the topic is how I managed to let go of control after having struggled with a very obsessive personality trait i don't call it ocd because ocd comes with obsessions and compulsions and i never really had full-blown ocd but i did struggle with obsessive patterns obsessive thinking ex obsessive habits for a long time um, which came in the form of me struggling with obsessions as a child but also me struggling with an eating disorder which I kind of came to figure out was also kind of an obsession and later on in life as you guys may or may not know of course existential obsessions so I'll just kind of start with explaining how it started when I was a child so when I was a child I used to be in school and i for example would have fears over my breath so i would come to school and suddenly have this idea of like what if my breath stops so i would start hyper focusing on my breath and then i would start panicking and i would start feeling like i was out of breath and so i remember my dad for example taking me to school and me just having a little anxiety moment in the um at the school gate because I really didn't want to go in because I was so afraid. It also resulted in me, for example, um, having weird obsessions. Like I remember one summer I went to camp and I, <laughs> one of the kids had lost his wallet and he was like asking around like, has anyone seen my wallet? And for some reason I put it into my mind that I had stole the wallet. Well, that was not true at all. So I had convinced myself what if I took the, what if I took his wallet so I started searching through my things I of course didn't find it and I was like what if I what if I took it what if I stole it and that obsession over this guy's wallet lasted for like weeks even if I got back from the camp I was always so anxious I felt I felt actually very similar to how I felt when I was struggling with my existential fears um, this complete feeling of lack of trust and lack of control most of all which is kind of obviously why it results in wanting to get more control um, so those were some examples and then I kind of just got over that I kind of just stopped obsessing but then I remember that turning into me when I was around high school getting like these very strong binge eating attacks so I would be like when I was 13 I guess 13 14 years old I would start just really having intense cravings and like binge eating so like eating everything out of the closet and I guess this is not necessarily a obsession but it kind of came from this deep feeling of unrest in myself because I wasn't really happy in school and I wasn't really feeling good so I guess that's kind of why I started eating so much I had this huge huge appetite and then I started gaining weight obviously because if you start eating a lot you gain weight and I remember we went on a holiday when I was like 13 14 and I was not happy with how I looked and then I discovered that I could lose weight so I started swimming a lot I started eating more healthily I started like making this plan for when I was gonna go back to school where I would like have this routine and structure and I remember being so incredibly excited about that because I was like oh yeah I'm gonna do this thing and I'm gonna be in control of my 
my physical health and my, my weight loss and everything. So I started losing weight. I started feeling pretty good. But quickly that lot like losing weight became an obsession, became something I started to almost get addicted to. And that's when it started to obviously not be healthy anymore. So I started to lose weight so much. And I only realized this in hindsight, but for me that was again a way to feel very much in control of something. So my weight and weight loss became the only thing that I cared about and I was so obsessed over it and I was always thinking about it and always thinking about food and so yeah that was like the phase of my life where that was my obsession then I got over that because I tackled the underlying issue of um of feeling not good enough in myself not good enough and not comfortable in my own skin but again like there would be phases where it would come back and then there would be other obsessions that started to come up like one obsession i wouldn't really call it an obsession but something that i did struggle with was in my first relationship and later relationships too i had this very strong need to have control in the sense not that i wanted to control the other person but i felt like i always had to be reassured by that person like that everything was fine and i would like obsess over everything that would go wrong and that would make me feel so anxious and I always had to have this certainty of when I was gonna see that person and I know that that was coming from a deep fear and again a deep lack like fear of losing control because I was trying to control that person staying with me but that ended up eventually pushing them away because it's not attractive to be in a relationship with someone that constantly wants to make sure they're gonna stay just gonna take a sip mm. and so yeah then the last obsession i would say that came was the existential stuff so i started to get an obsession over existential questions and answering them and i really just started to become so afraid and that's where a lot of people that i'm working with and i'm coaching obviously struggle with with the existential thoughts the existential anxiety and again like a lot of people say that they have ocd and i i don't think it's actually ocd because ocd means that you have a very strong obsession but you also get it compulsions and every time you perform the compulsions you make the obsession stronger so for example if you have this obsession over clean hands and washing your hands then you also have to wash your hands and every time you wash your hands the obsession of feeling clean gets stronger um, but with the existential anxiety there's not necessarily a compulsion and I don't think it was ever that bad for me uh, but anyway so how did I actually stop this pattern? And I have to admit, in some aspects, I can still be a control freak. And I think that part of me is just a part of me that I'm gonna have to embrace. But if you learn how to live with it or befriend it, then you can also ease the symptoms and actually overcome the pattern. So I guess for me, after I had this existential obsession, what I always say is, the existential crisis you can't control so I could control my weight I could control like my breath at the end of the day like I could find some kind of um, reassurance in that my breath would stay I could control or I could could figure out the relationship stuff but when it comes to life and especially death because a lot of my existential obsessions came with death I was always thinking about what would happen after we die what would happen like do i still exist like do i just disappear and just a complete need for control and certainty over life and death and over the meaning of life for example the fact is that there's never ever gonna be a way to figure that out or to control death death is just something that we have to accept there's just no other way to to get over that fear and to get over that lack of control so i'm actually very happy that i got the existential crisis because it was not only a challenge to 
find more peace but it was a challenge to finally learn how to manage this deeper lack of safety that like resulted in me constantly needing to have this control because yeah the only option that i had was to surrender because if you want to keep fighting life and death well that's your choice but then you're keep gonna keep being miserable so that's when i started to really meditate on surrender and started to meditate on just like letting go of control and finding deeper peace and it worked obviously <laughs> otherwise i wouldn't be having this channel and helping you guys through it with me um but I guess like what I want to tell you by sharing all this information is that this existential stuff that you're going through, even if it's very, very present or whatever, kind of whatever obsession you're going through right now, if you're not going through an existential obsession, but you have a, like health OCD, like um, I don't want to call it OCD, but like you're always obsessing over your health or over a relationship or over something else no matter what it is it comes from a deeper feeling of you not feeling safe within yourself or safe with life and as long as you don't tackle that pattern your obsessions will probably just keep shifting which is why i think even though the cause of a lot of people's existential crisis or whatever you're struggling with can be different but what's underneath is often the same. The fact that you need to find control means that you do not trust and that you do not feel safe with life the way it is. And the only way you can learn to do that is by finding peace with life as it is, by letting go, by surrendering to it, by practicing detachment and practicing letting go, because that's the only option you have. And I'm sorry if that is not what you want to hear but it's the truth and i promise you that it can happen for anyone and that you can feel better at the end of it um but yeah i was just thinking because now that i've resolved this underlying issue that i have with control well i wouldn't say resolved ask my parents i think they would say <laughs> that i'm still struggling with it sometimes but it's it's gone down immensely and i befriend it now and i am aware of it when it's coming up but for example in my relationship now i used to never be at peace in relationships like romantic relationships because i was always afraid that they would leave and that came from me not trusting that if they would leave that i'd be all right so that's why i constantly wanted to control the relationship and be sure that they would stay and have control over when I was gonna see them and when I was gonna meet with them and also maybe have a little bit of people pleasing there where I just kind of wanted to please and, and have them stay and that's kind of gone now actually in my relationship it's a much more safe feeling that I have because I know that if they would decide to leave or if anything would happen that I'm still in control of my own inner peace and that's the goal, you know, the goal is never to control, the goal is to feel like you don't have to control. By the way, I'm just gonna show you my nails. I'm not in love with the color, but I also don't hate it, so I guess I'm positively surprised by change, by the change I decided to make <laughs> in changing the color. I usually do. I'll probably only be able to show you my one hand because I don't want to make this video too long. So I guess I could finish off by giving you guys some tips on how to actually learn to break this deeper pattern of not feeling safe so that you can also let go of this need for control. The first thing I would say, and this is not going to come as a surprise, is to start a meditation practice. And I know I have put a lot of guided meditations out on this channel and there's a few that I know can really help with that. The second last one that I made is a really good one for safety and for letting go. But I think actually what I would recommend you to try is just trying unguided meditations. And in this beginning, this is very difficult and it's very like 
unsettling and I know that a lot of people are even afraid to start meditating because they feel like um, they feel afraid of themselves but that's the thing it's because you feel afraid of yourself your own mind your own thoughts your own feelings and life that you try and you continue to run away from it and trying to get this control but the moment you learn how to sit with yourself the moment you learn how to surrender to your pattern and just be okay with it and learn to become comfortable with discomfort then you start finding peace with yourself you start finding peace with your thoughts with your feelings and this might take a couple of weeks might even take a couple of months but it's again it's not about finding a quick fix that will just fix your problem and the quick fix is always to find the reassurance or the control but that's just going to sustain this general pattern over a longer period of time. So if you really want to change in the core and be able to surrender and let go of control and basically become this very breezy, carefree person, then you're going to have to learn to sit with your discomfort and you're going to have to learn to surrender to it when it's there. So meditation is one thing I would recommend. Another thing that I would recommend is really just consciously choosing to let go and a good like kind of thing that works with that is every time you struggle with something that you feel like you want to control but you can't you literally picture the two options the first option you have is to resist that you can't control it and then you still can't control it but then you'll be unpeaceful second option is to accept that you cannot control it and then you still cannot control it but you're fine with that and you feel a bit more peaceful and getting over control issues really is about making that second decision consistently so every time you're faced with wanting to control something you just go can i control this is there any way i can do anything about this no and then letting go because at that point you know you're no longer choosing for control you're just choosing for your peace and you can either not have control and be miserable or not have control and be at peace so it's about making that decision more consistently um, and a third maybe a third suggestion that I would give you is to start acting from your higher self and what is your higher self your higher self is this Part of you that is a part that deeply intuitively knows what's best for you and that part is alive but we often listen to the ego because it's loudest because it wants to protect us and then we forget to listen to our higher self and our higher self always knows what we need to do so for example if you are struggling with something and letting go of something or whatever you're struggling with instead of listening to your instinct in that moment which is what comes from your animal brain or your ego try and listen to your higher self and asking like what would my higher ideal god goddess self do in this situation and then being brave enough to make that specific decision so acting against your pattern and acting according to what the higher self so to say would tell you to do my nails are done on this side. I'm going to quickly just finish the other. If you're looking for a coach to help you with anything you're struggling with, feel free to send me a message for a free intake session so we can see together how we might move forward together and how it can help you. There's also um, two courses on my uh, website that can help you with your inner peace, with your anxiety recovery. So feel free to have a look at that as well. And um, I hope to see you guys in my next video. Have a good weekend.